while building our deep neural networks one of the choices that we need to make is the choice of activation functions that is which activation function to use so first let's understand what are activation functions these are mathematical equations that determine the output of a neural network and these are attached to each neuron in the network and earlier uh, we had drawn this that each neuron performs two tasks first task is to take the input from previous layers along with weights and biases and compute a, a sum we called it z and this z was then passed to activation function and uh, we had used sigmoid activation which gave a value between 0 and 1 and uh, based on that it it will determine whether this neuron should be activated or not or it's also called firing of neurons so whether to fire the neuron or not based on whether neurons input is relevant for the model's prediction or not. These also help normalize the output of each neuron to a range like 0 to 1 in the case of sigmoid function or minus 1 to 1 as is the case with 10h activation which we will see shortly. Uh, but uh, this is not for true for all the activations as we will see some examples of that. And uh, one of the things to note is that these activation functions must be computationally efficient. Since we had seen that uh, there are many many layers in deep neural networks and each layer will have multiples of neurons. So these will be calculated across thousands or even millions of neurons for even one data sample. So this must be computationally efficient and need not be complex. And uh, for we had seen this uh, in our previous lessons where we had calculated the activations for this hidden layer and we had used sigmoid activation but this need not be sigmoid we can use a generic activation function for example we can denote it by g of z1 to denote some generic activation function and similarly for other layers and these can be different for different layers so we can denote them as layer 1 and remember we had used this superscript square bracket to denote the layer so this g1 denotes activation of layer 1 and g2 denotes activation of layer 2 So generally uh, we don't use uh, sigmoid act activation for these hidden layers and we will see a reason for that. And uh, one of the cases where we use sigmoid activation is when we are uh, doing it for binary classification task where the final layer should predict a value either 0 or 1. So it makes sense to use sigmoid activation which gives a value between 0 and 1 and we can uh, set some threshold like if the value is more than 0.5 then predict 1. If it's less than or equal to 0.5, predict 0. But apart from last layer, uh, these uh, sigmoid functions are rarely used as activation functions. And uh, one of the reasons for that is that they suffer from what is called vanishing gradient problem. And you will notice that when the value of this z is large, this tends to become flat as the maximum value it can reach is 1 and the minimum it can go is 0. So at large negative or positive value it tends to flatten out. So this slope tends to 0. So its derivative is moving towards 0 and uh, the gradient descent is very very slow to learn the parameters of the network and that makes the learning process very slow. And uh, we call this vanishing gradient problem since the gradient vanishes or tends towards zero. So we uh, uh, don't use sigmoid activation here. Sigmoid of g is denoted by 1 over 1 plus e raised to the power minus g and this is the graph for that. You can plot it. So one of the functions that uh, is more common than sigmoid is tan h and this tan h almost always performs better than sigmoid and the reason is that here instead of going from 0 to 1 this is 1 and at the value of 0 it's 0 0.5 and here it's 0 
and this is 1 this is minus 1 so instead of going from 0 to 1 it goes from minus 1 to 1 and it can be written as this And uh, it's just a shifted and a scaled version of sigmoid function. And uh, it has one additional benefit that uh, its mean is around 0. So for most of uh, the mean of the activations of a layer are close to 0 mean. So this helps in better learning for the next layer. So it has the effect of centering the data around 0, so 0 mean data. So let's see how this tan h is just a type of sigmoid. So we know that tan h can be written as e to the power z minus e to the power minus z. So what we can do, uh, we can add plus e to the power minus z and subtract e to the power minus z in the numerator that will not change anything so uh, take this to the right so what will be left it will be left e to the power z plus e to the power minus z divided by e to the power z plus e to the power minus z and then these two terms that is these two terms that is minus twice e minus z divided by e to the power z plus e to the power minus z so this is 1 so 1 minus 2 times uh, 1 over e to the power minus z we have just or plus z and in denominator it will be e to the power 2z plus 1 divided by e to the power z so here also we have expanded it this to e to the power z plus 1 over e to the power z this term is equivalent to this similarly in the numerator so it's plus so numerator is so 1 is separate 2 divided by this value divided by e to the power z divided by 1 plus e to the power 2 z divided by e to the power z so this this cancels and we are left with 1 minus 2 divided by 1 plus e to the power 2 z so what we can do uh, we can separate out 2 here so what is this term if you take a uh, 2z minus 2z equal to some other variable let's say x then this becomes 1 minus 2 times 1 over 1 plus e to the power minus x and what is this this is sigmoid of x so it's 1 minus 2 sigmoid of x so we can plot it like this so sigmoid of x is like this twice of this will stretch it from 0 to 2 and we take the negative of that so it will become mirror image of this graph and then add 1 to it so shift everything up so if we add 1 to it everything will be shifted up this is 1 so if we add 1 to it minus 1 this will come here this will come at around 1 and this thing will come around minus 1 but we had seen that minus 2z is x so x is negative of that so whatever is in the positive side becomes negative side and negative side positive side so just change this graph so now this comes to this side and this comes in the negative side and we get this tan h function and from the formula also you can see that it's just a form of sigmoid so that's why this uh, tan h is a form of sigmoid stretched and shifted version of sigmoid now let's look at some other uh, activation functions which help us get rid of this vanishing gradient problem 
since we see that for both of these cases if you look beyond these values you see that slope is close to zero and in this region also it's close to zero similarly for sigmoid so uh, gradient descent is very slow to learn here so overcome that uh, to overcome that we have rectified linear unit or in short we call it relu and uh, it's defined as activation of z is equal to max of 0 and z so if z is negative its value will be 0 if z is positive its value will be z so uh, you will argue that still for negative values uh, the slope is 0 but still there are enough number of neurons in each layer for which uh, these uh, z values are greater than 0 and uh, then uh, it's enough for the network to learn faster so in order to overcome this uh, this problem is called a uh, dying ray loop problem so for values close to 0 or negative values the slope tends to be 0 and again the gradient descent is slow for those cases and these are called dying ray loop problem so to get rid of this dying relu problem we have a modified version of relu called leaky relu so instead of 0 we have here max of 0 0.01 z and z so when z is negative uh, this 0 0.01 z will be smaller than uh, will be larger than z so if z is negative this this will be larger than z so its value will be divided by 100 and if z is positive then this value will be smaller so it will take the value of z so in this part also there is some slope slope is 0 0.01 so this gets rid of this dying relu problem but there are some other modifications of relu on top of that so let's see so one is swiss activation and it's a very new activation function and it's defined as not sigmoid uh, let's call it s it's z times sigmoid of z so this is our old sigmoid function and this you can think of or uh, getting the idea from maybe a relu function because here we have a z function so z is multiplied to this so what is the impact of that we can write it as z times 1 over 1 plus e raised to the power minus z so let's see what should be the curve of this so first let's draw the sigmoid function this is between 0 and 1 and here it's 0.5 so if z is 0 this entire thing will become 0 so let's plot it so it's 0 uh, when z is negative then this value will be negative so for this part it will lie below this line so that's for sure if it's very large negative value then this term will tend towards 0 this denominator but this z will make the entire thing negative so close to 0 but in the negative side and uh, at 0 it's 0 and at 1 what will be the value it will be exactly equal to sigmoid so let's say 1 is here so here it will tend towards this value and at large values of z this term will not have any impact this, this term will become close to 0 so denominator will be 1 plus 0 or close to 1 so this will de dominate that is it will become linear like normal relu so this is the curve of swiss activation function and then we have parametric relu so remember in uh, leaky relu we have this max alpha z and g so here alpha is a parameter and it can be learned instead of 
assigning a fixed value so in uh, case of leaky relu it's 0 0.01 uh, but in parametric relu this acts as a parameter and can be learned so these are some of the activation functions that are popular uh, you should uh, think of using one of these relu functions for your hidden layers as a default unless you have some specific requirement and in the final layer uh, you can go ahead with sigmoid function if it's binary classification kind of task or there are other uh, versions of sigmoid like uh, softmax activation which is another activation function which uh, is used for multi-class classification unlike the sigmoid which is mainly used for binary classification.